like and subscribe to the 13 Mitigator Ford Fusion. I like well, thank you for listening to Let's Talk Racing.tv. Where are you located tonight? We're in Hampton. I'd like to welcome everybody to Let's Talk Racing tonight. We already have on the line with us Jesse Little. How you doing tonight, Jesse? I'm doing about that. How about yourself? We're doing pretty good. Got a little rain here, but besides that, we're all doing great. Waiting on uh, some people still to get here. And while we're waiting, do you mind giving us your uh, profile and what all you've done in racing? Sure. Um, I started off a lot like the motor drivers right now, racing at a very young age. I got the motor range when I was uh, 6 or 7 years old. And uh, slowly moved up to uh, bigger and heavier and more fashion cars. Um, I got into a family around uh, 8 or 9 and uh, moved into a racing car and then a late model and now I'm in a car in the last 10 or so years, so it's, uh, it's been a good and I love it uh, more and more each and every day. That's really awesome. Can you tell us what you uh, have planned coming up? Like, what do you plan on doing uh, later on or in the future? best of luck at that. I know how hard it is getting sponsorship nowadays. A lot of people we call uh, all say the same thing. It's been really hard. It's not as easy as it used to be. Could you choose a favorite track? Um, this is uh, this is my second full-time Cannon series. So I found uh, all last year, and then this year I've got a lot of cars that I Now, what did you think of the K and M race that you raced at Langley? Um, you know, I think it's a great short track. I think it's probably one of the better short tracks that K and M series has ever done. And uh, it's a blast to drive. Um, since we're recreating last year, it has so much strength, and, and uh, you know, it actually has a couple, uh, a couple groups going on where you can do some side by side racing, and, and uh, you know, it makes it, it makes for really exciting racing and. And you know it was it was a fun race for us last year. With, uh, you know when we're getting a little know how to uh, you know how to approach it, being that you know it's kind of uh, gotten older now. The asphalt you know changed. Uh, when the last year it was more so of uh, you know just clarify every single lap type of deal. Now, did you have any of the local drivers that gave you a hand out there? Um, last year actually, uh, we went up and tested. Um, Greg Edwards, who's uh, you know a, a very famed late model driver out there, he uh, he came out for the day and, and helped me really you know get my line down and and uh, kind of just tell me you know the major major uh, characteristics of the track and and uh, you know that helped me out that huge last year. We ended up uh, finishing third after having to start 14th because of uh, a rain out, and I felt you know that was one of the races last year really had a good shot at winning. So, uh, yeah, last year he helped out big time, and then uh, this year we weren't, we weren't able to, uh, to go up and test uh, you know, our scheduling, but, um, you know, I, I definitely talked to a couple guys and uh, just kind of got to, you know, just of uh, the new service. Now, when you were growing up, I, I know your dad used to race all over the place. Uh, how was that tagging along with him? Um, you know, and, and you'll probably get the same answer from a lot of the uh, other guys that I've driven through groups before. It's all I've known. And, and, you know, from, 
early as I can remember, you know, I've, I've been on the track. That started when, you know, my dad was in racing, you know, for me, you know, I was four, actually I was, you know, six years old then, but he, uh, he done it ever up until then, and, uh, man, that's really all I've ever known. Um, it's, uh, I mean, it's the only sport that uh, I have a passion for, um, and it's the only one I can see myself, you know, pursuing in the future, so it's, uh, you know, it's more so my life now. Um, I don't really look at it like a hobby or, or a, you know, career. It's just it's, it's the only thing I know. Did you play any other sports, like when you were in middle school or high school, or did you just really get hooked on racing and stuck to it? Um, I, uh, I tried to play many sports, like I said. I wrestled uh, my freshman and sophomore year in high school, and then uh, I, uh, I, I, I took my knee pretty bad. I ended up having to have surgery on it uh, last winter. Mm -hmm. I kind, of, I kind of put the hole on that for a little bit, uh, but uh, actually with the K&N schedule this year, uh, it ends, uh, ends in mid-September, and uh, I'm actually uh, talking to the football coach right now, you know, if I can't, uh, you know, play a couple games as fast for the, for the uh, high school since it's my senior year, so that's why I got to go through it, and I've always loved football, and a lot of my friends have kind of talked me into it now, so I think I might have to do that. That sounds cool. I'm a big football fan. What, <laughs> what, what are your classes? Canyon can race this weekend. Where y'all y'all racing in, this weekend? Yeah, sure. Yes, Canyon. Uh, we race Friday afternoons. Up at what? New Hampshire. Yes, New Hampshire. Okay. Okay. Yeah. What do your classmates think about uh, getting to know an actual live race car driver? They, uh, you know, they're, they're pretty much used to it by now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's really cool for them. And, uh, you know, every, every Monday after a race, they, uh, you know, they want to get the load down and, and uh, appear to play by play. And, and they're, uh, you know, they've actually run into the pretty big NASCAR game. And I think that's one of the coolest things. And hopefully, you know, that's something that NASCAR can really get on. It's just it's targeting the younger generation. And I know just from my involvement in the sport, um, you know, my entire school, you know, if not counting the school, uh, it's, it's huge race. And just because, you know, they, they can relate to a driver that may not be in the National Series, but is in an organization. And, uh, and that's something that I think is really important. And, and it's just, it's really cool that, you know, we can talk about it. And, and I hear them, you know, talking about, hey man, you see, you know, Junior Wood this past weekend, and talking about the hallways. And it's, you know, it's really cool to, to see, you know, a lot of the uh, care boom and support that I love. Yeah, it's nice having that local support, especially with friends, because a lot of people look at the sport and they don't take it as seriously as they really should. <laughs> and New Hampshire is the longest track K and N runs, is that right? Um, yes, and we also we also like you know Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah but it's yeah. A, a, a mile's about as long about as long as y'all run on. Yeah, yeah. It, is that about right? I mean, is that a good? Is that a good distance, or I mean, would you would you want to go to a mile and a half, or would that likely be too fast? I, I think I think for the age and the experience, and yeah, yeah. yeah. the personal relationship that you have with the driver, and the fact that you know you know you know you know the track that you know you know you know you know you know you know Is Iowa a pretty good track for you guys? Iowa puts in that same category where, you know, it's, it's super fast, but it also races like a short track. And, yeah. you know, you have a lot of side-by-side -side racing, and it's at high speed. And it's, and it's another one where, you know, it's just so much fun to be behind the wheel, you almost, you know, forget your racing. You know, just, I, I know every time I, I come in from, you know, for my first practice run going there in the spring and the fall, I got a trick smile on my face, and, and it's just a blast to, uh, to be at. Do you have a track you don't like to go to, like a least favorite, or do you take each one as experience? 
Silas was climbing out of his truck and basically tripped getting out of the truck and fell back and smacked his head on the asphalt. Um, I don't know if it was that bad, but it sure felt that bad to me. <laughs> <laughs> so, how much does your dad help you with uh, with driving some of these places? Do you get a lot of input input from him? Um, absolutely. And that's, uh, you know, if he's not helping me, you know, with my technique or something. Helping me with things I can do outside of the car, and I think that's usually, I think that's probably one of the biggest things. Is just you know, um, uh, you know, I'm super competitive, and, and uh, you know, we have the team, the guys, and I have to be most of the places to go. And if, you know, if I don't really get a good qualifying run inside the top five, you know, I'm, I'm usually pretty frustrated. And, and uh, every time, you know, every time I get done and we qualify, you know, eighth, tenth, or something like that, or even worse, he always comes up. And, and as I said, remember, you know, you know the, you're the heart of, of this team, and, and people are going to look at you, and, and that's going to that's gonna be what judges their attitude. So, you know, just make sure you always stay positive, and, and uh, you know, you always want people to look at you that way. And I think that will fight, you know, to, to any minute outside the race car. And, uh, and, you know, it's just, it's just uh, inputs like that that, you know, are hard to be somebody that hasn't been in it like him. Uh, you know, I'm really fortunate to, uh, to have that advice on my side. Sure. Now, is this a family team, or are you driving for somebody else? Oh, it's, uh, it's 100% family. My, uh, my uncle is the car owner, and then uh, him and my dad are, are uh, part-time owners of the team. And, uh, you know, my dad and I have been working together for about 10 years. And, uh, you know, he's the one that helps me with my technique and my technique. And then uh, myself, and so it's part of us that go down to shop every day and take the cars to the track, you know, get them all ready. So it's a one hundred percent family. Yeah, and I think that's more gratifying being a fan, little small family team, and all of you working together. I think it's more 
it's more fun. It's like kind of like old school racing to me. Yeah. Right. It's much more gratifying when you do well, I think. Absolutely. And I know, you know, just from being in the garage every week, and I think, you know, people, they have a different level of respect for you when, when they know, you know, how you're doing it. And, uh, and I think that's just something that, you know, can be. Does, who, does your dad ever spot for you? Um. Or do you try to keep them off the radio? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you used to want to it out, and Track most of the weekends with you guys? Uh, unfortunately not. Uh, with, uh, with his scheduling in the truck service director, he's, he's gone almost most of the time that we are. And, and the weekends he's home, we're usually not, uh, not racing. So I think uh, this year he's been able to make uh, three, three or four races. Um, and we can, you know, he's an hour on the truck here. So he won't, unfortunately, he won't be here for. Uh, uh, yeah, sometimes you be able to make it and we bad stuff on those strong teams. Now what is your, uh, do you have any plans to go truck racing or anything like that? Or is any of that in your future? How, and how old are you? I'm uh, 17 right now, so I'm, I'm old enough to run under a mile. And uh, next April, I'll turn 18. So uh, I'm going to be uh, going to be thing uh, I'm, uh, I'm eligible for for all, all sizes, all series. Um, and uh, the uh, whether or not we run a truck race or any national series, um, it's just, like I said, it's been like a lot of other drivers said, it just depends on sponsorship. Right now we don't have a truck, um, but of course we're talking to uh, many uh, team owners and truck owners, and uh, you know, just always, uh, always seeing if there's an opportunity, but uh, as of now, I'm probably not. All right, well, we're going to give you a chance to thank your sponsors before we let you go. It was great having you on the show tonight. Thank you. I uh, appreciate it. I, I appreciate it. Thank you for supporting me. From, you know, from my family to, uh, to NASCAR Tech and all the students in the class. And uh, PFC Brakes, Pinsky Racing Shops, all the uh, product sponsors that put a new uh, to our team and allow us to get track every weekend. All right, well, thank you so much for having us on the show. We can't wait to have you again. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. You're welcome. Oh, I was just saying. Okay. And now what? Now you got Sergio on, too. Sergio? Okay, no. Let me push the speaker. Hi, it's Let's Talk Racing. Hello, how are you guys doing? We're doing great. Who do we have on the phone? Uh, this is Sergio. Hi, Sergio. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing good. Great to hear. We have a friend of yours here. Oh, uh, who is that? By the name of Al Pierce. <laughs> Oh, wow. Sergio, how are you? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Alex? Listen, when I got out of the car, they were in penalty kicks between Netherlands and <laughs> Argentina. And Argentina. Who won? Do you know? Really? Oh I'm serious. I don't know. I'm not sure. I should have been watching that because it's on the television right now. Argentina won. Oh, they did win? In yes. penalty kicks. I thought this was Let's Talk Racing. Just saying. Well, it is. <laughs> we're, getting, we're getting a little kickoff, okay? Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Aren't you funny? Yeah, and I know Sergio's got to be a soccer fan. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Columbia's out of the now, so I haven't been early watching it too close to me. <laughs> would, would you have ever imagined that Germany would do yesterday what they did? <laughs> right? Oh my gosh, no, I had, that was such a shocker. Was, you know, they just scored again. It's it, it's now 8-1, to one, I think, but it, so no, anyway, anyway. That's just mean. That's oh. true, after, I mean, you I'm know, sorry. after it, after it got to be 3, you know, at 2 nothing early, you might can come back. Yeah. But once it got to be three nothing, it just yeah. it was over, and then they had to play like three nothing. Three nothing you're like, but at the same time, it's still early. Yeah, you know, they had to yeah. play sixty more minutes, knowing yeah. down three zip three nil, you're not going to win. Yeah. It was a five 
one at halftime? Five nothing at halftime. Oh, yeah. Five nothing. It, it, they scored yeah. one goal at the very end. It, it got to be seven nothing, then they let fell asleep and let in a goal. But <laughs> yeah. yeah. Some, some of the commentators said that about like at 27 minutes is when Brazil just gave up. They were oh, yeah. done. Oh yeah. And then they said they had to corral some of the people to make sure there wasn't any. Yeah, there was a lot of unhappy people. I know that, especially my friends who are very into soccer, who were Brazil fans, were not happy at all. <laughs> were you headed for New Hampshire this weekend? Yes, yes. I actually just got up here to New Hampshire. Oh, you're there already. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I've been here at the hotel. Actually. You in Manchester or Concord? Uh, right now I'm actually in uh, Manchester. Oh, okay. Okay. Next time, you, next time you're down this way, I have to get you to swing out here, Sergio, and let let you see some of the crazy stuff we do. <laughs> yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah, you're on the show live. Sergio, this has not been, and I think you'll agree, this has not been the best of years for you, but I know that you're optimistic. I know you're still looking for sponsorship. You're still working hard on your program. Do you see any hope at all? Is there anything in the short term or long term that you see coming along that's going to maybe turn things around? Man, I'm really hoping so. Um, you know, as we all know, racing is probably the toughest sport there is out there. Um, but yeah, I'm working hard. You know, we've definitely made some improvements at Langley. We just got called up and it's a mess is there, which, which is unfortunate. But we were fast. That was the first time all year that we were running, you know, for the majority of the practice session there, we were second quick to bed, center is He's been unstoppable this year. So that was good. We were right there at Ben and then uh, qualifying at Langley, we just haven't been up qualifying. Uh, I talked to my crew chief. I think we've got a little bit figured out for uh, for qualifying and how to get, how to get better there. Um, so we're going to give that a shot this weekend here at Loudoun. And, um, you know, it's good because Loudoun is, is one of my favorite tracks. It's not, um, <clears throat> you know, arguably my favorite track. So I'm really, really excited for this weekend. And, um, you know, excited to get started. I have a lot of laps here, and I know so many of these, these kids don't, haven't ever had too much experience on a mile track, so that'll be good. So you got upper hands, what you're saying? I'm hoping so, yeah. <laughs> you say it in a nice way. So you guys race what, Saturday afternoon? We raced uh, actually Friday. Oh, Friday, okay. Yeah, Friday at uh, 6 o'clock, I believe. 6 okay, okay. So are y'all practicing tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow we practice and qualify. Okay. Friday race. Awesome. I would say Rev racing as a whole this year has kind of been down. I mean, it, you know, they haven't really done as well as they've done in the last couple of years. So I mean, is it something? That, have y'all changed anything this year, or, or you know, because you know, it does It's not like one of you guys are running real well. Yeah, you know, it's been. It's been, it definitely has been a struggle this year. You know, started off really strong with Daniel winning those first few races, and then uh, from there it's just. Uh, Basically, we've been rose all the way. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it hasn't, as far as um, since I was here last, I know the whole personnel has changed. Uh, I didn't really know too many familiar faces when I came back, but I know a lot of equipment is, is the same. So, um, so I'm not sure. Uh, I mean, it, it's hard to tell where, where the problems start and, and where they go from there. I don't, but at the same time, you know, we've, uh, we're all out there getting a lot of experience. I know my teammate, J.P. Lee, uh, this is his first year in the East Series. He's had some strong runs this year, mm -hmm. which is awesome. And, uh, I think we're turning it around here slowly but surely. What I'm really looking forward to are the uh, road course racing that we have. Cause my background is all road racing, and uh, I'm really, really anxious to get out there and watch the and VIR. Yeah. When, is, when, is, when is VIR? VIR is, uh, I believe... First weekend in September. Uh, I think that... I well, mean, well, not the first weekend. The first first Saturday in September, maybe? No, it's actually in, in August. I think it's the second weekend in August. I thought, I'm looking at a schedule here. Oh, oh, okay, okay, the dates are above the... Yeah, August the 16th. Oh, okay. That's right. That's right. No, and then right. watch... Oh, watching... Watch so they're eight days apart. They're kind of... They're back-to-back, -back, I guess. Yeah, 
Yeah. Yeah, walk in Glen and then and then VR. So, okay. Yeah. Now, have you done? Have y'all done any testing out of VR? Uh, we haven't really. No, we have not done any testing. You know, we just had Jeff Little on, and, and he said that he thought, Sergio, that a one-mile track was is about as long as the Kate in cars should be on. He doesn't really think that a mile and a half would be a good idea. Is that is that kind of what you think, or do you think maybe a a single mile and a half race every year would be a good training um, place to be? You know, I really... I really think it would be a good idea. Um, you know, the mile tracks today, um, it's still a short track. You know, the mile tracks are still short tracks. I know for a lot of the rookies, especially being able to be 15 years old in the series, um, a mile track like, you know, something like Dover that we go to is pretty overwhelming. Um, but at the same time, you know, a lot of these, it, it, it's, you know what, it's a developmental series and trying to keep costs, um, you know, lower, as low as possible for all these teams that, you know, you slowly are seeing the you know, when I, when I first started running the series, we had, you know, Gibbs, Michael Waltrip, RCR, um, all these, all these cup teams that were there. And I feel like if they were to run a mile and a half, it probably would have been better to do it then. Now there's a lot more smart you know, We put out Turner Scott, um, but, you know, you don't see many of the huge cup team names in the series anymore. And, and um, I feel like if they would have ran a mile and a half, it probably would have been better to do it back then. And there was a lot, the, the field was a lot older at the time, too, and a little bit more experienced. So um, I think it's just an issue of safety and an issue of, uh, I think, the age, too. You know, you look at the field, it's really young. You know, I'm thinking if, if I'm a team owner and I'm looking at a driver in the K&N, and he's really good on short tracks, he's really good on a mile, but if you move him to trucks or nationwide, or... God forbid, immediately cut. He's going to be on on the biggest tracks he's ever been on, and that's a tough place to learn. Which is why I think maybe one race a year on a mile and a half, whether it's Charlotte, Atlanta, Texas, wherever, one race a year on a mile and a half would be a good idea. I mean, I, I agree. I totally agree with you. Yeah, I'd be a few on a mile and a half track, so um, I'm all for it, man. That'd be great. Yeah, that that would give a team owner looking at a young driver some idea that okay, he's done well everywhere he's gone. Let's give him a shot. Yeah, I agree. Then maybe it might be you. <laughs> That's the thing. Look at that. Just let me have a shot, somebody. <laughs> yeah, I, I would agree with that, Al. I, yeah. I think it would be a good idea for somebody to get some experience on at least something on the track. Yeah. Mm -hmm. An idea of, because I'm sure, have you run anything that size, Sergio? Uh, my biggest track was, uh, well, I guess technically loud, it's just a little bit over a mile. I think it's like 1.5 or something like that. Yeah. Just a tiny bit. Yeah, and it's just a little bit over a mile. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I appreciate that. I really right. do. We, we got this recorded and documented just in case he, he ever tries to say he forgot. Or oh, no. Did. I've told him, man, every time I see him, I give him a... I give him a business card and say if I can help you with sponsorship or media relations or contact with people, recommendations, be glad to do so. But the other thing I want to remind you of is this. You that you promised me a couple of years ago. Uh oh. Uh -oh. No, 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 no. It might have been it might have been at Phoenix. But you promised me a couple of years ago that at some point in time you were gonna go back and finish at Radford. Yeah. And I'm gonna hold you to that. Oh. Mm -hmm. It might not be at Radford, but I will finish. Well, somewhere, yeah, somewhere. Somewhere, it, yeah. Yeah, because you started and you've made progress there, and it would it would do me good to know that that somebody that I took an interest in early on went ahead and did what he said he was going to do. So, yeah, I mean, go to UNC Charlotte, go go wherever you can, but try to try to finish up somewhere. Absolutely, no, okay. I, I definitely will. If I can help you, let me know. <laughs> All right. As an AKA, let him help you. <laughs> no, he knows that. Yeah. Yeah. So, what do you do during the week, Sergio? Uh, I'm in the shop all week. Uh, I'm just helping the guys out. Um, they let you work on the car? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we uh, all the help we can get. Now, is that like a requirement for all of the guys that come through there? Because I mean, I know it's kind of like a learning, you know, place. So, does is it kind of a requirement that everybody that drives has to kind of work in the shop too? Yeah, everyone does, and as far as the part of the requirement, you have to move to, you know, North Carolina to where you can go to the shop. So, um, you know, everybody's moved from all over the place. We've got Daniel from Mexico, me from Virginia, uh, JB, which from Vegas, Devin Amos from New Mexico, uh, or I already said him, Paige from Wisconsin. Yeah, so we got people from everywhere. Um, you know, we all moved down there and we're working the shop together, building a team, team bond, and. Um, so that's good. We're learning a lot too. So what what do you do in the shop? Do you have like a specific job? No, no. You just kind of you know help out with everything that you need help with pretty much. Some days you don't really have anything to do at all. And other days, uh, yeah. I guess it's just depends on it depends on how easy you are in your car a week before you know. <laughs> <laughs> Comes back in one piece, not too many crutches. So you had some work to do after Langley? Yep. Uh, yes, I did. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, we got a little bit of damage there. We had to. Uh, Picture those up a little bit and the tail. Um, we made some changes to it to, to a little bit just to pull uh, your hamster, you know. So uh, I'm taking the pretty much take the same car every single race except for Dover will take our steel car. So. What do you mean? What kind of car are you taking to Dover? Uh, we take a uh, steel body car. Uh, okay. So we take the uh, composite car. Uh, I got you. I got you. So how many are y'all allotted like two cars for the season or, or something? I mean, you can have 10, 15 cars if you want to. Uh, we only have, you know, per team, you only have two cars. We'll have one composite and one steel. So, that's at least up there where we're at, you know, per team, depending on budgets and all that. I got you. Hmm. Where, is, where is Columbus Motor Speedway? <clears throat> that's in uh, Columbus, Ohio. So okay. That's a tricky track. That's actually one of, I, I'll, actually, that's one of the tracks that I like going to a lot because they're really, really welcoming over there also, but... As far as the track itself, it's, uh, it's really, really different. It's basically a, Langley is almost like a circle, but Columbus is a hundred times more like a, I mean, there's no, you're never straight there, which is, you know, the cool because that it has its own characteristics, but uh, it's rough racing there for sure. I guess okay. that answers my question of least favorite track. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't think I've ever heard of it. I think there's another track y'all used to race at, in Ohio, but I don't know if that's the same place. But anyway, well, have fun up there. So you go from you go from a mile flat track to a basic round, literally a round track, then you go to Iowa, then two road races back to back, mm -hmm. Greenville, Pickens, and then Dover. So you got you got a fun little. You, you don't go. You, you've got a lot of variety coming up. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's fun. <laughs> that, that'll be that'll be fun. All these. You know, one weekend we're with Cup and Nationwide and all these guys racing on mile track, and then the next weekend, like you said, we're we're the main show at a little, you know, three eighths track, which is, you know, sometimes even more fun. So um, the main thing is when we're with, when we're at these tracks like New Hampshire and Dover with the Cup guys, it's you know, still a little bit more pressure on the driver and on the team to perform just because you got um, 
you know, heavy hitters' eyes on you watching. So, um, so yeah. What what would you think if K and N decided to add a place like Eldora to the race schedule? Be awesome, but you know, a lot, I know a lot of the uh, the people that are racing now come from dirt, and they're fresh out of dirt too. You know, just because this is a developmental series, um, a lot of kids come out of dirt, and their first step is either a late model. I know, I know a lot of times the K and N car. So, um, like I know Nick Drake, he uh, he comes from sprint cars, so. Mm -hmm. no, I know there'd be a lot of tough, tough race dirt drivers out there, and for someone like me that's never been on dirt, it would be it'd definitely be a challenge. But I've always said it uh, these past few years now. I've always wanted to get in a dirt car, whether you know, I think a sprint car is a little dangerous. Uh, as you can see, uh, everyone seems to get hurt in those things. So yeah, um, yeah. But anything, I mean, I get it on <laughs> anything that they can have four wheels and everything. I'll, I'll jump on. <laughs> do you do any late model racing during the summer? I haven't now. We, I used to have my late model, and uh, I ran a couple times. I ran up that, um, I ran an old Dominion. It was a few years ago now, and I ran the Benny Hamlin, Benny Hamlin uh, short track show down in Richmond with it. And that was actually at Richmond was the last time I was in a late model. And it's been, I don't know, the combine, but it's been like two two years now, maybe? Yeah, mm -hmm. two years since I ran the, the late model. So. But we're not doing just, you know, we're not doing much of it, so I might as well, mm. as well yeah. Well, I guess Old Dominion's got a new track that's going to be ready soon. You keep hearing that, and I don't, you know, yeah. have they broken ground? I uh, see, anyway, I went, uh, well, they're, before they even started building it, they were just clearing, uh, clearing trees out. <clears throat> they had me up there, and I kind of took a tour of the property, and, and looked at the layout they're going to have, and it, it looks like it's going to be awesome. Uh, they're going to have uh, the oval there that's going to be a full, like, two and a half mile road course. Uh, I'm excited for that. That'll be cool. I, I think the plan mm -hmm. is for, for it to be, like, up and running by sometime early next year. Yeah. I, I, I mean, have they, I mean, there actually is a work going on out there? Do you know? What's like sort of clearing it? I had, it. I, I, uh, clearing it they had already, uh, they were tearing down all the trees to, to make the track. And I haven't been up there since. This is last summer. Uh, when I was up there, so I'm not sure the process on that or the progress. I don't know why they'd want a road course up there because you've got VIR down this down in Danville. You got Summit Point, not that far away from Washington. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if you'd want a road course up there, but I don't know whatever they want to do. You know, I've heard about this thing for years and never, never seen any any groundbreaking work done. But maybe I should. Maybe I should drive up there one day. Oh. It'd be worth the drive, but you know, okay. I haven't I could I could check all the progress of it and uh see but I haven't I haven't been up there. I you know, when I moved to Charlotte I haven't been making it up back home too much, so I haven't had a chance to go back there. Hmm. I have to get somebody to check on that. Yeah, definitely. Well have a good time in New Hampshire this weekend. Oh, thank you, yeah, I'm excited, uh Get out on the track tomorrow and get some practice in. Uh, the weather today has been beautiful here. I, you know, we went out to lunch, uh, me and my guys here in Manchester, and uh, everyone's like, hey, it's hot out there, and it's like 80 degrees, you know. It's beautiful. I think the same weather will hold up all weekend, and uh, we'll have a good, good weekend. Get, get a good runner. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, good luck to you, Sergio, and thanks for coming on the show, bud. Hey, thank you guys. Thanks a lot. Always good talking to you. Right, thank you. Call if you need anything. I will do that. Okay. Had to get that in last time. He's a good guy. Should, <laughs> should, should we call uh, Jack and tell him that he's a part of the fan club? Just I'm sure he it? knows it. <laughs> Since he did not show up tonight. Mm -hmm. Apparently you'd the have, rain have to, was too much. You have to much. fill Al in on all that stuff so he'll know what's going on. Yeah, Raj already gave me the download, so. No, oh, we just said. Uh, Let's tell you the story <laughs> of the Scott Allen fan club. Yeah, well, of course, you know, they're, they're picking on me, and then uh, they asked Jack if he's going to be, and he said no, he refused. He said if I passed two cars this weekend, he would consider it. Well, mm -hmm. I started 19th, and I finished 12th, so I did my Pass part. Seven. That's right. So, I mean, so, he ought to just become a number. How many cars has he passed lately? <laughs> <laughs> oh, see, I like it. Like <laughs> Only the ones on the interstate, probably. <laughs> When's the last time he passed? Hey, did, you, did you see uh, what Clint Boyer tweeted after the race on Sunday? Mm -hmm. Apparently, he said they got home and he was sitting out on the deck 
and his neighbors come over and we're skinny dipping in this pool. <laughs> Oh. Remember what? The skinny dip and they were naked oh. in his pools. So we heard that correctly. Okay, wow. Yes. Yeah, that was oh. so funny. That, okay. So is I guess they didn't expect him to be home because of the race. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> so is this like a above ground or in ground pool? Well, I would imagine it's an in ground pool. I guess it would be in ground because I have an above ground pool. Then again, I do have a privacy fence mm -hmm. around. I just could not fathom if my like, wow. yeah. So they were sitting there having a beer, and they seen the neighbor, neighbors come running across and getting in the pool. <laughs> so I guess they didn't see them until they said something, or were they I, just kind of stunned? He, he, did, he didn't really say, but it was uh, it was pretty funny. Wow. Well, kind of speaking of Sunday, I think, and I may be in the minority, I think the Astro did the right thing by calling it when they did, okay. and, here, and here's why. If they had said, okay guys, it's 3 o'clock, we can race till midnight if we want to. Yeah, we, can, to we can either sit yeah, here and watch it rain for five hours and start up again at 8 o'clock if it doesn't rain, or we can let you people go home right now. No matter what they did, well, was they were going to make lose. half the people mad. Right. Mm -hmm. The crowd that said, hey, we got nothing else to do, we'll stay here all day, said, okay, it's, you called it too early. The fact that it rained until 7 o'clock that night, Mm -hmm. Didn't seem to register in their brain, mm -hmm. but you know it's it's um, it's a tough deal when you when you've got that many people half want to stay, half want to go home. So you're gonna make them mad no matter what you do. Yeah, you got a logistics nightmare anyway because people are having to change their plane reservations and everything else if you do that because they're gonna be planning to race the Saturday night and leaving on Sunday. So. Yep. Yep. Good. Yeah, I mean, it was a lose-lose situation. I think they made the right call. And it was pretty cool to see Eric win. Um, mm -hmm. What's the crew chief? It's his first cup win, right? Trent Owens, yeah. Yeah. Um, and people people always say, well, they wanted the Petty Car to win on the 30th anniversary of Rich's last win, yada, yada. You can't I, plan I, that out. Exactly. There's no exactly. Way. You can't. I don't care what they say. If they had, if they had waited until... Say they waited till five o'clock and finally got the track dried, and just before they went to go out, it started raining again. Which, by the way, it did. Yeah. All those folks have sat there for three hours and gotten all excited, watched some jet drives run around for three hours, and then they get rained on again. And, and they say, "Well, if Danny had been leading, they'd have they'd have called it. If so and so had been leading." They'd have made them go back out there. So no, yeah, that's just not true. I, I hate when people say that. They oh, think it's, no, it's so you. so easy. I mean, honestly, you couldn't have. They could not have planned the rain to show up at the time that he was leaving because right. there wouldn't have been a few laps. And Kurt Busch, I believe, would have been back out front. Something's well, just. It was Kurt well, Brian Vickers, either one. Yeah. Because clearly, the forty-three car was not the best car of the day. Mm -hmm. No, they had lost. They had lost. 70% of their good yeah. cars in those two wrecks. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I think they got it right. I honestly think it's cool because, like, things, like, happen the way that is. Like, the hurricane that we just had here happened to land the same spot as the last hurricane out there that happened, like, so many years ago. Like, sometimes weird things happen like that. Yeah, it's, it's, so, I thought it was pretty unique. I thought it was great that the guy got a chance yeah. like, to win something like that, you know? Yeah, he won a race. I mean, he did. That, he, he just, just flat out won. I got, I got a question for you, Al. What do you think about the race team alliance thing they've, they've come up with? Yeah, that's a good The guy. fact, to me, the <laughs> fact that Rob Kaufman is the, is the head guy. From Walter Racing? Yeah, yeah. Indicates to me that that Jack Rash wanted to be a part of it, but not the leader. <laughs> Roger Penske wanted to be part of it, but not the leader. <laughs> Nobody wants to be the leader who is an acknowledged, successful in it for the long run type owner. Mm -hmm. Kaufman is a is a financial investor in Michael's team, but I don't think he is nearly as hands on as Roger or Chip or Richard Childress or Jack or Gibbs. Is he the one that, is he the one that started the conversations? Uh, he know? might have been the one that started it. And and I think to some degree, I believe what they're trying to do is create for the for the cup teams, 
the same kind of buying power and negotiating power with businesses like what Humphrey's doing with the short tracks. Short track. In other words, all these, these, like these guys can go to a hotel chain, either Marriott or, or any, whatever, and say, okay, we want to reserve a, a 500 rooms at every, at every property you all got on the same weekend. And this is what we'll pay. But we want to sign up right now. You'll be, you can be our official sponsor or our official lodging place. Instead of every team going and like negotiating their own other. deal, yeah. Yeah. these guys can negotiate for everybody. And I don't believe, I don't believe Roger Pinsky or Jack Roush or Joe Gibbs or any of those people are foolish enough to think, you know what, let's get a union. Let's organize. I mean, this Until is what it NASCAR, sounded a little kind of like. Well, yeah. But, <laughs> but if somebody were heading the group who's got a lot more to lose, I'd say you're right. But Cochran's got nothing to lose. He's not, he's not hands-on, that organization, like Jack and, and, and all the other guys are. Who's not in it? I mean, it's the, the Wood the Brothers, teams, Brothers right? were not invited. A, two reasons. It's a one-car team, yeah. and they don't run full schedule. Right, well... Like, the rest of the teams that weren't invited just aren't considered... They got, what, 20, they got 26 cars. 26 different teams are, are in the organization. So it's just pretty much all the big teams. Big guys. Yeah. Anybody, Anybody that's got two or three or four cars in the, yeah. in the hunt. Yeah. So, the big They're, the big they're nine owners, and they rep, they've got, I Sugar, think, a total Skips, of Pitsky, 24 Roush. cars, something like that. Yeah. So, I, I don't, I don't, I may be wrong, I usually am, but the fact that the first union that they tried <laughs> to form in 69 worked out so good. Didn't last very long. <laughs> yeah. And I just, I, and I can't imagine these owners and drivers being so greedy that <laughs> they've got to make even more money. Well, history repeats itself, you know, that, so it might be just one of those things. Well, they did, did say something about, uh, on Race Hub, I think it was last night, that, that did they think it had something to do with the, the TV package money? Oh. Well, they, they, they probably rightfully should be getting more. Yeah, because yeah, it's a what? How much is that TV pack? I mean, it's astronomical. Billions. Billions. It was two point eight, I think they said. It was two Are point you something. Billions. Yeah. Billions. Yeah. For ten years. Great. Ten. But it's over a ten year span, though. So. Still. It's still yeah. a lot of money. That's yeah. still you know, That's nothing. To, that's a lot. That's a decent amount. Two hundred eighty million a year. Yeah. So. Hey, here's, here's, yeah. There's there's the math. Here's the deal. Everybody really inside bad. that garage area yeah. is making a whole lot better living. Than they would be making on the outside. Well, that's very oh, yeah. true. Including Jack's son, yeah. including me, including anybody else who's in that garage on a regular basis. We're all making more money, and, and I mean, I'm making it by covering it, but anyway, the people who, still part of it. People who change tires and, and refuel cars and drive those haulers would not be making that kind of money on the outside. No. And, and a lot of them... Now that's as long as they're working for good top name teams. Well, but still. I mean, if you say you work for, for Tommy Baldwin or somebody, pick a, pick a mid-level team, you, you're making, just throw a number out there, you're making $70,000 a year. Yeah. And all your travel's paid for, all your meals and lodging are paid for, mm. benefits, insurance, yada, yada, yada. All the time. You're in NASCAR. Yeah. You get, you get shirts and hats and jackets. I mean, you, thrown at you. And, and you're and you're a and you're a high school dropout with a twelfth grade, eleventh grade education. Where are you gonna make that kind of money? Yeah, exactly. I mean, even the shipyard won't take you for that kind of deal. <laughs> so, I think if they're smart, unless they get in, just unless they get unfathomably guilt, uh, greedy, I, I don't I don't see where this is gonna make a big difference. Now, I may be wrong. They may decide in the middle of January, okay, these 26 cars, we're not going to Daytona. Oh, really? <laughs> really? You mean Home Depot? Or not Home Depot, but, but Mass, uh, Monster 
and all these corporations Fast are going to let you sit out in Daytona? Yeah, go, really? Go Daddy. And... That'd, be, that'd be crazy. I cannot yeah. imagine that. I don't think that's going to happen. No, I can't. Uh, so I, I wouldn't. That's why, I to me, <laughs> it, it's not an organization that's going to go on strike. No, I, I, w I wouldn't think yeah, so. Yeah, the, the word strike makes it sound more like a union. The more and more we're talking about this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it's one of those things that's a wait and see thing. We'll find out what's going to happen when yeah. things start happening. But again, I think, I think the fact that a man is the head of the group who's got very little to lose says a whole lot about it. That, you know, Pinsky said, hey, yeah, we'll join up, but, but I don't want to be too, you know. I don't know. What, what, are you, what are your thoughts on... Uh, the, the latest cup race that we didn't even feel the full 43 race cars. But Daytona didn't have 43? No. no Kentucky didn't. Oh, yeah. Well, they had almost as many cars as they had fans. <laughs> they tell me, and I was not there, That's they tell me that the crowd at Kentucky was just, just embarrassingly tiny. And it was embarrassingly small at Charlotte. Well, the end of May. It was awful. Yeah. Who owns Kentucky? Bruton. Bruton, okay. They didn't, at Charlotte, they didn't even bother to even open the back stretch. All that 40,000 seats on the back side, really? they didn't even open them. Oh, such a shame. And of course, they didn't open them at Daytona last week, but they've been doing that for a couple of years now. Mm -hmm. Those seats, it'll be interesting to see where those They're going to take those seats down after February. Be curious to see where those seats go. Yeah. Where at? If they suddenly go to Iowa, you got to think, you know, mm. that's one of our tracks now. Yeah. Mm. We might we might can get a cup race out there. That'd we be, might we might can take one away from maybe Eldora. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> you're you're really hooked on that. I, ain't you, well, I tell you what, I, that I like, ain't never gonna happen. It would be nice to see it happen, you know. But. If it does happen, Raj is gonna tell you. I told you so. <laughs> I, I can see NASCAR maybe. Maybe. Um, maybe taking a race away from. Trying to think of where they get bad crowds and where they could use a good crowd. Um, Kentucky's already on the list. It's not, yeah, it's not, it's not their. Just it's one. not their day to take though. Yeah, that's Bruton's day. True. NASCAR would have, or ISC would have to, to give up a date mm -hmm. to go to Iowa. Uh, Michigan maybe, although that's that's too close to the big auto makers. Yeah. California maybe. maybe. Well, they only get one anyway. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Phoenix. Phoenix gets two. Take one away from Phoenix. Yeah. Although they get good crowds out there. Yeah, they say, like, but they get, good, they get yeah. apparently really good. But they don't have many seats either. Which is why it looks better than it is. Oh, really? Well, how yeah. much does it hold, do you know? I don't know. It doesn't hold 60,000, I don't think. Oh. I don't think. Well, then that changes that. <laughs> I wish they'd take one away from Pocono, which doesn't draw anybody hardly. You think that's just loyalty because they've been part of NASCAR so long? Well, Bill French Sr. And, and Dr. Mattioli have something going because you just wonder. And I, I'll remember for the rest of my life the fact that Dr. Mattioli said in his final few years of life, by God, this will be a 400-mile race over my dead body. As soon as he died, he went to 400 miles. <laughs> and, and so it did over his dead body. Uh, <laughs> literally. Yeah, rolling it, in his grave. <laughs> 400 miles. Well. Uh, it's just an awful place to go. So yeah. far, what, race, what races have you liked this year, Al? Which ones have I liked? Yeah. Um, I mean, you go to most of them, you're able to, to see what's going on. Oh, Daytona so was interesting except for the six-hour rain delay. <laughs> Phoenix, my God, Harvick just killed them. Uh, Vegas was okay. Kozlowski won that. Or oh, look. I think Logano won that late. Pocono was interested in that Kislowski would have won except for the debris on his grill. Yeah. And he let Junior go. Um, he, he misjudged. Uh, was it I kind of like Martinsville. I think Kurt Busch kind of maybe stole that one, but it got, it got Tony's team off to a decent start. Mm -hmm. Well, Harvick had given him a good start, but um, I did a story for Auto Week saying I don't know whether Tony is really recovered. 
Yeah, that's either mentally that's or physically. physically. I think it's more mental. Uh, and then if you, you know, if you told yeah, him that, if you told him that, he'd just... throw you hitch upside the head. <laughs> but yeah. it may be true. Denial. <laughs> he may not be ready. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think he would. He's not a person that would admit that. No. 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 Not his position. That's what we call denial. <laughs> And, and, and everybody says, oh, Danica finished eighth at Daytona. Great. Mm -hmm. Danica is worse in points now than she was a year ago. Mm -hmm. So don't tell me she's getting better. Yeah. No. She, oh. might be, she might be running better no. what do you, what occasionally. You the, the rumor of her going to Formula One. Oh, uh, God. <laughs> you got a better shot. Well, not, not a better shot. But you've got as good a shot as she does. She's That's not crazy. Anywhere. That's crazy. Mm. It's just something I don't I don't understand why the media of which I'm a member <laughs> insist they insist on creating Here we go again. They insist on creating news radically <laughs> weird news items about things that will never happen. Mm -hmm. You know. I can see it now. Al Pierce says he'll turn down pull a surprise. I don't right. think I'm gonna get a pull a surprise. Not gonna be offered one. Danica says, I don't know if I want to run F1. Have you been asked? <laughs> no. Well then shut up. <laughs> well, oh, wasn't there wasn't there a challenge thrown out there between Danica and Richard Petty? Oh or thank God that Wait, went what? that went away. That oh. went away a long time ago. Wait, what uh, I didn't hear I about remember, this. This is back in January. Yeah, yeah I remember you, something about that. Do you think that was up. a little in my opinion, I thought it was a little bit disrespectful to the king. For, you know, the, a little. I don't mean. I don't. I, I, I don't remember. Like. <laughs> I mean, I felt like. Yeah, I don't remember who started that rumor. Who, it was Tony Stewart. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Oh. You're right. You're right. I mean, I, I did, and I know Tony was just defending his Which driver. Which is fine. That's yeah. absolutely but, fine. But I thought it went a little far. That, yeah, what he should have done was said, "Well, I'll tell you what. Let's get Kyle Petty out here. He doesn't think she can drive. By God, I bet you she can outrun Kyle." Mm -hmm. that, that, that would have been a little bit more reasonable. Y yeah, right. Respectful exactly. too. And you would have thought he might have taken her up on it. Oh. Because I, I don't. I think, would have loved to. I guess. Yeah. He would have done it in a heartbeat. I, I don't think the king said anything out of line. Of course he didn't. Yeah. I mean, he said every, what everybody else thinks. No, which, she didn't have a shot at winning. Which was, was nice, no. the fact that he said what everybody was thinking. You know. Well, I mean, it, it just. It was some, It was a just a common question somebody asked him, and he replied. And I would have said probably said the same thing, but I think because it was him, it it, right. it became something bigger. And then yeah, it's I think Danica gets king. offended easy too. Well, of course well, she does. I mean, yeah, I, I mean she's under a microscope. Yeah, she's, a yeah she's full of being in a controversial situation the whole time. Is Which she, I mean sometimes is unfair. I, mean, I think a lot of people expect a lot out of her. Yeah, how many times you know Al? They drag her into the media center. That's all it is. They don't do it like they used to. Yeah. But when she was beginning, like it was to. constant. Yeah, yeah. She was always Absolutely. under the camera. Like you said, it was like a microscope. Constantly watching her. What's she doing? Yeah. What's happening? Yeah. And that's a highly stressful situation. And when you're constantly under that, of course you're going to be very defensive. You're constantly going to have like your guard up. Yeah, but I, I mean, that's part of it. I think if you're a woman of her caliber that came in, you're going to draw a lot of attention. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah she shouldn't have expected that, you know? Here's what scares me. Uh-oh. Oh David Reagan won a, a cup race yep. a year ago. Mm -hmm. yep. Amarillo won one last Sunday. Yep. Um, Whose turn is it next? Who was the most, who, before those two, who was the most recent absolutely stunned? Oh, Kozlowski won at Talladega one year mm -hmm. yeah. driving a 51 car. Right. Okay, there's three teams and three drivers that you would have never thought mm -hmm. would, would win. But they happen to be... When the when the when the moment came, they happened to be at the right place Please at the right time. time. It f terrifies me that she might be like that one day. <laughs> no, not <laughs> one, not one, not one. Don't she do that. She would be. Has been given that chance many times. It'd be it'd be like James Hilton at, at Richmond in 1971 or two. You're leading, or you're running fifth. It starts to rain, and everybody goes down pit road. Well, you're so far behind that by the time, I'm sorry, it's not raining. Caution comes out. The first four guys go down pit road. 
you are so far behind, in his case, almost a track length behind, by the time James Hilton came around, it was pouring rain. So they told him, stay out, stay out. And he stayed out and got his first win because of a rain deal. Could happen to her. Yeah, it could happen. Now, how big do you think that would be? Oh, it would be huge. That would, I can only imagine that now, all that kinds of things that were going on, all yeah. that media coverage. Okay, yeah, wow. You would hear the rain dance thing. It would, it would, the only way she'd ever live it down would be if she passed somebody with three to go under green right. and, and, and won a race legally. Yeah, I'm and saying. Led all, qualified the top five, ran up front all day long, had good pit stops, dodged a few wrecks, and passed somebody well, that's with five That's earning it and not to getting it. Exactly. And that's something you can say, yeah, yeah. I did well, that. Did you that. can't tell me I, I didn't and, and, it. and I would, I would get down and, and apologize and kiss her feet if she did that. Oh, but if she backs into one, you got that on there, right? <laughs> if, she, if she backs into one, like Kislowski didn't back into it, but he did wreck two guys to get there. Mm -hmm. And Harvey, I mean uh, James Hilton, didn't do a thing except be far enough behind to he had twenty seconds to make up his mind to I pit or not. Yeah, it started yeah. raining so he hard, and so the guy was like, "You better not pit. Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna stay out." Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'd have, yeah, I would have taken it. I'd have done the same thing. I mean, well, yeah, because I mean, the win's you, a win, you know. Yeah. When Kyle Petty won at Richmond, when Earnhardt and Walter wrecked, Kyle was so far behind. Mm -hmm. You know, he he had he had half a lap to get back. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. lined up. I mean, how many times have you seen on the NASCAR's Greatest Moments type videos that yeah. you see? You have this last lap wreck of the two leaders. And well, that one yeah. person gets ahead. Kelly no. Albert and Donnie Allison. Yeah, yeah. Richard won at Daytona in '79. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, that's but not, I just, that's not I idea. just don't think. But you got to be running well to, for it to happen, too. Yeah. I don't think she's going to ever run well enough on a consistent basis. And there's well, no I would say that, but because <laughs> the because the other week, where was she at when in all of Tony's cars finished? I think in the top ten or twelve. I mean, she. I don't know. I don't know. She <laughs> ran pretty well at Daytona all day. She was. Well, she I was, was kind of expected. She's she's that's her tend to that's, done, that's her done well there. Right. But there was somewhere a few weeks ago. It might have been Kentucky. Kentucky, maybe. Yeah, it could know. have been. They they all ran well, and, and she, I think she finished. I think about twelfth oh, somewhere right there. I think it was, but she ran in the top ten most of the day. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I mean, she won the top five, but she was eighth, ninth, the, seventh. Her one her one big chance she had was on the road course until she hit the tennis shoe. Well, that was a nationwide race, too. Yeah. 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 But, I mean, that would have been just as huge yeah. for her at that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Alright, it's time to eat. Is Robert? Was it 8 o'clock already? I guess he's, yeah, it's 8 o'clock. Eight 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 he's not going to call. Uh -oh. Robert? No, you better... no, he already texted me. He had something hit. Better call next time, mister. <laughs> he said he didn't want to feel like slamming on the driver's side. No, <laughs> still. I want to talk to my buddy. <laughs> Well, I have to get you to get you with me, and I'll call him one day. All right. Anywho, and one more thing. Well, one more thing. On. NASCAR has got to do something before they go qualifying again at a plate race. Did you watch qualifying from Daytona? I well, yeah, they went off to the last second and all run out or something like they that. They were running. They were running 140 miles an hour most of the day, and occasionally a group would decide, surely by radio commands. They all agreed, okay, let's go now. And then they take off. And then they thought if somebody was in their group they didn't want, they'd slow down and pull down. It was it was awful. Oh, so for one for a long time the pole was like 140 miles an hour. Hmm. Until they got serious about it. Interesting. In the last few minutes. Well what what I mean, they can step in and say, Okay, can't draft off each other. Well, what what they can say is that um, yeah, you can't have more than say five cars in a in a group, or four. I don't know, but it was. Or reduce it down, say you can no more than two in a group. Pr prone to a wreck. Yeah, I, I don't. I, I don't know what they can do, but they they've already admitted that they it was a cluster. Cluster mm -hmm. It was you not exactly it. what they were looking for. Oh, uh, what'd you think about the nationwide guys when they were practicing? Or was it where they actually qualified when the rain all of a sudden? Rain came out of nowhere. It was, it was qualifying, wasn't it? Yeah, qualifying, yeah. Yeah, Robert was part of that. Yeah, they tore, yeah that was, that was kind That's of That's like what happened to Richmond back 
45 years ago. James Hilton, it was, the, the track was, was fine, it was wonderful. Caution came out for some reason. A bunch of leaders went down pit road, and in that 15, 20 second interval, it started pouring. Just out of nowhere. What the odds? And Hilton said, why should I pit now? I'll be leading. And never restarted. Uh, but that many, happened to Dak. How many times have you seen oh, Jeff wait, Burton wait, do, wait, do, I do may be wrong. rain dance? Remember Jeff wrong. Burton doing the rain dance? Uh, oh. Remember so I may be wrong. I think it was Dave Marcus. I think it was Dave Marcus. Chances that I don't know if James Hilton, Hilton, Hilton won. Hilton won at Richmond and Hilton won at Talladega. But I think, I'm sure now because I remember the photograph of Marcus standing in the rain looking up grinning. Oh, uh, yeah. There, I think there is a photo with his shoes or something yeah. standing there. It, yeah. was, it was Marcus, not Hilton. But the scenario is still the same. Yeah, right. He was so far behind the, right place the, the right first time. three or four guys. Yeah, things like that happen. Which was probably a good thing because that let him make the decision. Yeah, back yeah. then, you could come out pit road immediately. You didn't have to wait until the field caught up. Right. Uh, and those, uh, okay. those first three or four guys and no pit road came down either. pit road immediately. And Marcus, who was running fourth, was over in turn two. And it started raining in turn three. And he said, I'm not going to pit. Might get lucky, and he did. That was his first win. That was one of his first Is that his only win, or did he win a few? No, races? he won some more. Did he? Yeah. But like you said, it's another win. Yeah, Marcus raced for. Yeah, he, he won, won a bunch. Time. Not a bunch, but he won enough. So are we ready to eat, y'all? Well. Damn all right. Right. Well, thank you for watching and joining us. Let's talk racing. Uh, next time we will get uh, Jack to admit that he's a part of the. Scott Allen fan club. <laughs> and hopefully next time we'll have my good buddy Robert Richardson. And y'all have a lovely evening. See ya! Hey guys, I'm Daytona 500 winner Trevor Bain, and thank you for watching Let's Talk Races. Hi, I'm Robert Richardson Jr., driver of the number 23 Dodge Challenger for R3 Motorsports in the NASCAR Nationwide Series, and you're watching Let's Talk Racing. I'm Teddy Peter, driver of the number 17 Toyota in the NASCAR Camp World Truck Series, and you're listening to Let's Talk Racing. driver of the 33 NASCAR late model 2011 Old Dominion Speedway track champion thank you for watching Let's Talk Racing TV I'm Sam Hunt driving 42 car I want to thank Let's Talk Racing Hi my name is Natalie Sather I drive the 94 K&N Lady Eagle Safety Wear Butler Built Seats Bell Helmets Hooker Harness Seat Belts Number 94 at South Boston Speedway Be sure to listen to Let's Talk Racing